All right, I haven't really advertised this, but I got mentioned. I'm doing dual stock heat exchangers. This is my first mock-up of it. Let's see, can I give y'all? You notice first thing you notice is that you this air guy on this side is here, but when you do the dual one, you lose this air guide on this side, which uh, it's not that big of a deal. I've got it to fit right behind the, the oil cooler. As you can see, it's not touching. Uh, I was in a crunch, and you see this gold well, brass fit in here. This is I needed a fit into because I use all OEM holes to make this mock up just to see if it would work. So I just needed an extension to get this here. So I just put it here. It don't leak. So I just left it there for right now. Uh, as you can see, I flipped the temperature sensor up. And then you know it's red sport. Got the extra one. Uh, so the fluid flows in here. And then it comes out of the first of the first heat exchanger. Flows down to the second heat exchanger. And then gets pumped right here. Down. And you'll see right here this goes almost all the way. This hose right here goes all the way up to the top. And then here's your your pump that all the silver sports have. Your normal pump. And you can see it's connected here too. So it's a push-pull system if y'all haven't. You know, if y'all don't already know that. And as far as fitment, I since this is a mock-up, I use zip ties as you can see. If I can get the light. Here, so I have this first, the second heat exchanger connected to the kind of like hanging off the the original heat exchanger, and then the original heat exchanger bolt is still there, and then because of some clear, a little bit of clearance issue right here, it's off by about a half of an inch, so I'm not able to connect this right back to the hole that's right here. So another hole right here that it usually would go in. So it's about a inch of clearance issue right there. And that's mainly because of the type of holes I use. As you can see, it kind of butts up. So if you got a silver sport, you won't have this issue at all. I'm looking into a way of doing some holes that can bend, bend a little bit more. And then I'll get that half an inch or so back right here and I can actually have it mounted because as you can like I showed you before it's not actually touching well I kind of did something to keep it from touching but I'm not going to speak on that right now because I'll be probably kidding this in a little while so I may I added some clearance here but I'm not going to really speak on how I did that yet but this is the setup. I've been running it for a couple of months. And well, maybe two months or so. I've not got a single leak. Got very consistent uh, um, power out of the car. Uh, I ran the car at an autocross with over 100 degrees outside. And I never once noticed the car lose any power. At least it wasn't noticeable. So if it did lose anything, it, it wasn't noticeable to me. And so, and I, um, I ran this on the tail of the dragon also. This setup. And once again, didn't notice any loss of power. And you know how to, anybody who's been on the tail of the dragon, you know how that goes. So, I just wanted to actually show the setup. So this is a very low cost alternative to maybe, you know, some of the more expensive uh, heat exchanger upgrades. 
And then it's also alternative for the more the cheaper one that everybody does. And this could turn out to cost about the same as your cheaper, was it Frozen Boost? It probably cost about the same to do it. But, you know, you get, uh, as you can see, I'm using all OEM stuff, so. And it seemed to work. And then the only difference that I mainly wanted to do is I didn't just want to do one big heat exchanger. I wanted a dual pass heat exchanger. So first one is going to take the initial heat of the charge air cooler uh, fluid coming. And then it's going to get cooled again through this one. So I like that better than having one big one. And like I said, I haven't noticed any heat soaks. And but I am stock tuned, but and I have down pipes and Y pipe and you know I use dry element filters, so the car got a little bit more power. But I haven't noticed any heat soaking. And in general, my charge air coolers are are you can touch them no matter what I've done. I tested it on Tail of the Dragon after running the mountain up and down. I immediately pulled over the car, touched the charge air coolers, and they were still like cool. So I know it's doing its job. But I'm not tuned yet, so I can't give you any log data. So whenever that happens, I'll, uh, I'll have that data out. But anyway, that's my setup. I uh, hope y'all enjoy.